Okay guys, well I've had to revise this video in regards to this painting, The Transfiguration of Christ, because unfortunately I actually had the artist and the dates for the painting uh, incorrect. So I'm sorry about that. The correct artist was Raphael and the correct date for this painting was 1516 to 1520. However, that changes nothing in regards to the symbolism within the painting. But I did find some more interesting information that I wanted to share with you about the history of this painting. Now, it was commissioned in 1515 and Raphael didn't actually start the painting till 1516. But interestingly, it was commissioned by this guy here, Cardinal Giulio di Medici. Now, this is a very interesting and very influential family in Rome. And there are connections to Medici and other artists as well that I will be looking into. But what I find really interesting is this, this guy here is the cousin to this Pope Leo X. Now, this guy was a real piece of work. He is the Pope that actually was known for quoting how well we know what a profitable superstition this fable of Christ has been for us. And this quote was also later included in a play by John Bale called The Pageant of the Popes um, and of Murder in 1513 to 1521. Now apparently this Pope did murder several cardinals who opposed his papacy and because what this Pope was known for other than just showing complete contempt to the herd by quoting uh, you know how well we know what a profitable superstition this fable of Christ has been for us but he also was known for selling indulgences to the rich now, indulgences are where the rich can actually buy forgiveness from God through the church. Now, this is ridiculous, and this is just how absolutely manipulated the herd has been. It is quite pitiful how people have allowed themselves to be treated in this way and lied to and manipulated. But this is what happens when we see people just following blindly and never questioning anything. And so this guy was definitely a real piece of work. So I will link this underneath and you can read this in more detail. So let's go back to the painting. Now, we can find a lot of very interesting symbolism with this in, within this painting and what they're actually hiding from us and what the truth is and what they've gone to great lengths to keep hidden is the fact that this illumination this enlightenment, this um, reuniting between ourselves and God consciousness happens on multiple levels. It happens internally within us, it happens consciously within us, but it also happens physically. And it happens through the male and female. And this is where we see gender, which is one of the hermetic principles of the universe playing out in the physical where the divine male soul and the divine male female soul reunite to access divine knowledge because the divine male soul is the Ark of the Covenant. He is the container of wisdom from the divine and the divine female soul is the Holy Grail. She has the ability to understand this information and unlock this information from the divine male twin. Now, the reason I'm calling them the divine male twin and the divine male, uh, female twin is because the first souls that are birthed through onto the physical plane have the information and knowledge from the divine within them. They are closest to the divine and as each soul is birthed onto this realm, it carries a um, diluted memory of their divinity and of this knowledge. And so when the light from Orion returns once again and this information can be accessed, because it's almost like the light of Orion, which is our God consciousness for this manifested realm, it's almost like when the light of Orion returns, it activates something within the, the memories um, of the twin souls. 
And because they are closest to God consciousness as they were birthed through first, they remember this before others. And so they are the teachers for the others as they begin to also remember their divinity and remember who they are. And so we have this slow awakening. However, because there's been such an explosion of population within the last 50 years, there are a hell of a lot of souls on this planet that pretty much have no memory of who they are. And this is why they are such excellent fodder for the establishment and for the Catholic Antichrist, because they really don't have any memory of who they are. But it is the original souls the divine male soul and the divine female soul that actually start remembering their divinity first. And then this is actually a catalyst for others to start remembering this information and this knowledge. And then it just continues to awaken. But unfortunately, we really only have a certain amount of time to awaken because the light of Orion is returning. This is why we are all experiencing this, this consciousness awakening. Well, those who are actually connected to themselves and connected to uh, their environment are experiencing this expansion of consciousness and this awakening. You know, I've said many times there's a difference between being awake and being conscious. And there are many people that have woken up to the fact that they're a slave but that is very different from being a conscious uh, soul and understanding thyself. And this is really what it's all about. And this is why I'm bringing forward this information, because it's important that you understand who you really are. And you're not, you are not just a being of lack and you are not finite. You are not a sinner. This is all absolute manipulation from the religious establishment to hide the truth of your power. This would not be beneficial for them if everybody understood the truth of who they really were. They would have absolutely no power at all. So the power they have over us is actually only an illusion because we perceive them as having that power and we perceive ourselves as being beings of lack instead of beings of great power because we really are ethereal and this is what these paintings are basically showing us. Now... On the side of the female, because we have the female always on the right and the male is on the left. The female is the moon, Isis, the male is Horus um, and the sun. And so we have the twin soul male. Uh, the symbol for the divine twin soul male is Jesus. And the symbol for the divine uh, female twin soul is Mary Magdalene. Now, what we're actually seeing here is that Mary Magdalene has actually just been Christed. She has been Christed and um, we can see that uh, Jesus has, is just about to be Christed. But we know that Mary Magdalene has been Christed by the information in the painting that tells us this. Now, to start with, we have eight figures on the female side. Now, we know that eight is the symbol for the immortal soul and the immortal twin soul only remains immortal if they pass judgment. So we can see that because we are seeing the figure eight, that Mary Magdalene has passed judgment. Now, we also see that Mary Magdalene here is shown in the physical. And we can see that because her top is down and the artist has gone to great lengths to show us that she is in the physical. However, if we include Mary Magdalene after she has been illuminated and Christed, we get the number nine. And nine is the uh, divine number because we've got three threes within nine. So it's almost like the divine within the divine. It's like a fractal of itself. Now, the other interesting thing that we have to pay attention to is the other clues that the artist gives us. Now, he clearly shows that this man is pointing towards uh, Mary Magdalene in the physical. And then we see Mary Magdalene is pointing up. And then we see this man here is pointing up towards the Christ consciousness. Now, we also see that nobody here 
is looking at Mary Magdalene after she has been Christed. They do not recognise her. They do not see her. It's almost as though she's gone up another level. And the only one that actually sees her now is this man here. And we can see he's connected to her because he's wearing blue. Now, remember, blue is symbolic for the female and red is symbolic for the male. And so sometimes we, we, we actually don't see the female as part of the main characters in a painting. We'll see her further back. But somewhere near her, there will be a man in blue. And most often it is standing directly behind the female or right next to the female. So they had to symbolize the female somehow, but they wanted to keep this information hidden so they don't put it out so blatantly. And I've actually seen somebody say that this was a small boy. And that's just ridiculous. We can quite clearly see breasts and she's wearing a dress. So this is Mary Magdalene in the physical Okay, she's just about to be Christed and we're seeing this painting as though it's just happened and she has been Christed and that is why we see the eight go from the number nine. That is also why we see this figure here clearly connected to her through this blue symbol and so as I said, the blue is the female but he carries a huge book of knowledge. So this means that Mary Magdalene is now bestowed with the divine knowledge. This is what this man is symbolizing and this is why he is the only one facing Mary Magdalene and he's also his hand is towards Mary Magdalene. Now on the side of uh, the male twin soul we see Jesus and six other figures and this makes seven. Okay so we're seeing Jesus in the ethereal form about to be Christed and this is why he is almost ready to be transfigured. Hence the name of this painting is the Transfiguration of Christ. But we also see that the divine male soul will be Christed because if we include these two other figures, we get a nine. And so this is a process that is about to happen. This is what this painting is showing us. Now the interesting thing is if we look at these three heads that are also in alignment, we get the number three and three is the number of the Trinity the male soul, the female soul, and God. Now, in between the bottom of the painting and the top of the painting, so we've got the physical and the ethereal, uh, kind of relayed to us in, in the way that this painting is placed, we see that there is uh, five people. Now, five is symbolic for our, basically, our contract with God, our destiny, what we know to be our path before we are birthed on the physical realm. So this is also showing us, you know, did we fulfill our mission? Did we fulfill our destiny? And this is also what we're judged upon and why we're weighed and measured against our mission, our destiny. Now, the other interesting thing is we've got these two ethereal souls and they are right next to Christ consciousness. Now, this is the ethereal of the female and male. We've got the female on one side and the male on the other. You know, female on the right, male on the left. Now we can also see that Mary Magdalene in the physical is pointing directly up to this figure. And we can actually see that this figure is quite feminine. When you actually take away the top, you can see that this figure is made to look like she's wearing some type of dress. Now we also see in the Sumerian glyph where they're standing either side of the tree of life that even though both figures have beards, one is clearly holding a phallic symbol right at the sacrum chakra and that is indicating the difference between gender. And we also see in the weighing of the heart ceremony that even though there are males and females depicted that they are wearing beards. So there is something to the beards and obviously it's still a way that they can depict the female but also hide her uh, beneath the identity of a beard. So I'm not sure uh, why that is and of course I will be researching more into that but I'm definitely seeing this pattern repeated so that is why I know that they are sh showing us the female in the ethereal form right here. And so what's happened is we're now seeing that the light of Osiris, the light of Orion has returned, transmuted through the sun and this is also what is known as the Christ light. This is why we see Jesus uh, as part of uh, this symbolism. It's all showing us that, um, you know, the Christ consciousness returns through the sun 
and uh, then we are Christed. So there you go. So once again, I do apologise for that error. I will have to make sure I don't uh, make that mistake again. Um, but thank you for the clarification. And uh, there you go. There's my revision of the information. So thanks again, guys. And uh, as always, peace out.